The, uh, the, the final shooting we're going to discuss today, um, probably the one that's garnered the most public interest, that did also happen on March 17, 2024. Uh, the location of that shooting, uh, there's actually a couple of locations, but we'll call it the, the, the final location. It was 8412 Zadeco Avenue Southwest. Here's our case information sheet. Approximate time, 7.52 in the morning. Again, the address, the case and CAD information, as well as the uh, primary detective assigned to the case. So we're gonna start with, um, how did we get here? How did we come to capture the individual who was wanted for uh, the murder of the New Mexico State Police Officer? Um, I, I think it's, it's known now, but it started with a tip from a cashier at the Murphy's gas station, all right? Uh, that individual recognized the subject. Uh, the subject went in to purchase uh, some items that required him to produce identification, and he did so. Um, he actually provided his ID, so th this individual was heads up and called it in, and we responded to that call for service, just as we would any other call for service, to attempt to locate the subject. So you'll hear the 911 call and the information uh, that the deputies received. So you'll see now uh, an, a satellite image of where the Murphys is at Coors and Blake, that's in our South Area Command, and then how far he went. Uh, deputies went into the area immediately to attempt to locate him, but you can see there's, there's quite an amount of uh, just vacant land that's, that's not built on. So he's cutting through those areas, cutting through neighborhoods, he's on foot. Uh, but ultimately, we do catch up to him about approximately 40 minutes after the initial call came in because uh, we weren't going to stop looking for him until we found him. So this is the address 8412 Zadeco where the incident concludes and he's taken into custody. And it, again, it started there at uh, the intersection of Coors and Blake. So the, the next set of slides or, or the next portion of video you're going to see is there's a lot of it. There's a lot of video, and of course, you guys are, are and, and have already IPRA'd the video. You can watch it in its entirety. You can, you know, uh, view whichever portions you like. But for, for today's purposes, we're going to uh, follow the lapel cams of the two deputies, uh, one deputy and one lieutenant who fired, um, as well as uh, an assisting deputy who shows up on the scene right as the individual is taken into custody. And you're going to see them chasing the individual through the yards, um, repeatedly giving him commands to stop, trying to take him into custody. But keep in mind, this individual has been um, the subject of a, what could be described as a manhunt uh, ever since he was identified in connection with the murder of, of Officer Hare. So I can't say enough good things about the way our deputies handled the situation, their tactics, their professionalism all the way down to the length of time and the lengths they went to to provide medical attention to this individual uh, for the multiple gunshot wounds that he sustained. He's only alive because we rendered aid to him at the scene. Um, so we'll, we'll follow those videos now. Again, you're gonna have a, a part of it will be a split screen and you'll see those, those videos are linked up. So you can see the perspective of multiple people who are simultaneously attempting to locate him in these yards as he's running. Go ahead. 
is Lieutenant Marujo. He's showing up. He is the individual who first spotted the suspect. Now remember, sorry, Jimmy. Remember, we got a pretty specific description of the suspect from the clerk at the gas station. That's already been communicated to all the deputies that are actively looking for him. At this time, remember, it's 40 minutes after the initial call came in. We do have a pretty, um, a pretty good perimeter set up. It's, it's large, but we still have a, pr a pretty good perimeter set up. So we felt confident that if we encountered the subject in the neighborhood and folks held their perimeter position, that we could do a, a methodical search if necessary and still apprehend them. So you'll hear the lieutenant reminding folks to maintain your perimeter positions, and then you also have because we have a sighting of the individual and an active foot chase through the yards, you have active attempts to go and apprehend him as he's fleeing. So they just saw him. They know that he's probably in the backyard of this house that's right in front of them. Lieutenant Marujo sees the individual. There's a large trampoline in the backyard of one of these uh, houses, and there, the retaining wall in the back is, it's got to be close to 10 feet high. The uh, suspect is attempting to use the trampoline to jump and vault up over that wall. Um, and so when uh, uh, Lieutenant Marujo fires, that's, that's where he is in relation to Lieutenant Marujo. You can see the trampoline there. He's gone up over that wall. So you're going to hear it. It's faint, but you can hear it. I'm going to pause it just so, to preface what you're about to hear. There is a neighbor uh, directly across the street on the second floor looking out towards us um, into the yard, and she's able to see the suspect is laying down right on the other side of the wall. The deputies can't see the individual. He's laying down, and she yells to the deputies, watch out. He's right there. He's laying down. Um, 
thankfully that gives the, the deputies a moment a pause. They're able to check that near corner on the other side of the wall and see that he is in fact laying there uh, directly on the other side of the wall, right, right on the other side of the, of the pink uh, playhouse that's in the back of this yard. So you have both the lieutenant and deputy are moving up together as they reach that fence. Simultaneously, as that's happening, uh, deputies are adjusting their perimeter. As you, as you hear them calling out new addresses that this individual is confirmed as being seen in the backyard of this address or that address, they're adjusting their perimeter so that we can, we can be in a position to cut off any avenue of escape. Um, you're going to watch uh, Deputy Cloud's lapel cam, and the reason we have this on here is that as the uh, individual is, is running, he uh, loses control of or throws, uh, unknown exactly, the weapon that he was carrying, which was a handgun. And you'll see it very clearly go flying over the wall right in front of the deputy as he's pulling up uh, to his perimeter position. He's starting rescue. He's starting medical for the offender. Deputy recognizes there's critical evidence in the roadway. He's, he's signaling another deputy to make sure that that's secured. It was uh, just slightly raining that morning, so they were able to find an empty cardboard box and, pu and put it over the, the gun just to try to preserve any evidentiary value that it may have had. Um, it probably goes on for a good 10 minutes of them providing medical aid to him. Chest seals, trying to pack the wounds. The subject was, or the suspect was struck four times. Uh, he did survive, and I credit his survival to the fact that despite the reasons of why he was wanted and despite what he was doing today during the apprehension incident, um, our deputies maintained composure, slowed everything down, start rescue for him immediately. I mean, it's not two seconds after the handcuffs go on, the lieutenant is starting rescue. So I think that's a testament to our professionalism um, and the way that the incident was handled from start to finish. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. oh, fucking in this. <laughs> Subject was nice enough to carry his wallet with his ID in it. It makes our job very easy. Just as before, some evidence photos from the scene. This is a photo on the left of the weapon that went over the wall and was recovered from the roadway. It's an aerial shot of the backyard where the apprehension took place and then the scene after the apprehension. You can imagine just by, by watching it yourself, there's multiple locations and multiple yards that had to be processed. It was, it was certainly a long day for the shoot team that had to process this incident. Uh, regarding our deputies that were involved, Lieutenant Marujo, it's his second deputy involved shooting. He's been with our agency for approximately 13 years. 
Deputy Lau, Deputy First Class, it's his third deputy involved shooting. And he has approximately seven and a half years. Uh, regarding Mr. Smith, obviously he was wanted for the, the murder of New Mexico State Police Officer Hare. As I mentioned, he was struck four times and he's 33 years old. Uh, obviously there's some information that we're not able to comment on regarding his criminal history and other jurisdictions. Uh, we'll, we'll leave that information to the, the criminal prosecution. Um, in New Mexico, he did not have a documented criminal history. Um, prior to, obviously, the incident that, that precipitated all of this. So with that said, I'll, I'll turn it over for questions. Uh, if I'm able to answer them, great. I think the, the sheriff will probably answer uh, the majority of, of those. Uh, and thank you again.